Last time we left off, we were in Guadalajara, Mexico at the fastest restaurant in the world. Time we're running. And... Oh, oh. oh, oh yeah, before I forget, in case you're new around here, we're Chris and Sarah, and we're currently driving the Pan American Highway with our dog Kramer. Currently, we're in Mexico, heading south to Argentina. And we're saying the Pan American pretty loosely, but you never know where we're gonna end up. Today's a rather short drive from Guadalajara to Guadajanto, Mexico. 273 kilometers or 169 miles for our American friends. It normally takes three hours to get there, but in our truck, we're just gonna say four to play it safe. Kind of amazing when we get to a town like this and this gentleman has opened up an RV park. He has electricity and water, but then look at this view. Like we're sitting right above the city. It's only a 10 minute walk to downtown and our truck is just right here. It was funny because we uh, I went to go use the restroom which is over here and there's stickers of all these overlanders who have stayed here before. It always blows me away the hospitality of somebody opening up their place and we can stay here and it's safe and for the most part pretty quiet, which is really appreciated. You know, we haven't plugged the truck up in forever. <laughs> and so oh, we're just plugging it up because you know, why not? This is awesome. What a beautiful, beautiful setting. Yeah, check it out. Standing on a building, I'm a lightning rod And all these clouds are so familiar Descending from the mountain tops, the gods are threatening But I will return an honest soldier I don't know about you, but sometimes our travels can start to blur together. And every now and then, we stumble on a place that reignites our sense of wonder. And Guadajanto, Mexico was that place. It made us feel like we were traveling for the first time and seeing something new. Steady on this high rise, like every lightning rod, and all these clouds are boiling over. Swimming in adrenaline, the sky is caving in, but I will remain the honest soldier. So welcome to Guanajanto. We can't wait to show you why this place is special. So this is known as Kissing Alley. The legend goes that a wealthy family lived in this building and their daughter whose bedroom window looked out into the alley fell in love with a humble miner in the building next door. 
Apparently, they would kiss across a tiny little alley. Unfortunately, the girl's father found out and, in a fit of rage, killed her. That was an overreaction. Yes, yes it was. Overcome with grief, the miner threw himself to his death in the alley below. Think of it as their version of Romeo and Julia. Man, it's a bummer. We wanted to come here because it shows just how narrow these little alleyways are. The city is so old and so beautiful, and it's part of what makes it so quaint. Yes, it's a quad burner getting around this place, but it's so pretty, and it's just... Something from a different era, for sure. This is so narrow. So those are the two balconies, the ones the, with the flower pots on it, and then the ones with the green. I'm like 99% certain that's the right one. You can pay to go up inside. I think it's like 50 to 100 pesos. And I guess one person can go one side, one person go the other, and you can kiss. Chris, I love you, but you can kiss me for free later. <laughs> you heard that here first, folks. Come here. <laughs> Buildings of Guanajuato hug against the hillsides and curve into tiny little alleys below. This colonial-inspired city in the mountains of central Mexico was once a thriving silver mining town. Today, it's a vibrant tapestry of colors where every street and building bursts with life and history. So Guanajuato has this very impressive tunnel system. It was built in the 1800s and it goes all under the city. It was actually built by engineers, similar to how they built the mines in the area, but it was to help the city from flooding because the river here would flood every spring and it would just mess up the town. And then they built these tunnels to help it. But then later on, they ended up building dams and so the tunnels are kind of useless now, except for they have repurposed them for cars, pedestrians, bikes, so now there's this little intricate maze of tunnels all underneath the city. There's 27 different entry points into the tunnels, and just, I find them fascinating. I think it's so cool and it's so pretty. I read that the eastbound traffic is stuck underground and the westbound traffic stays above ground. I'm not sure if that's true. It seems to be true. Okay, so this is shot on the iPhone because we were just taking a night off from filming. Obviously, we shouldn't do that because that's when things happen. So we ended up in this parade. Uh, we, so we ended up in this parade. It's, it's for the celebration, it's for the holiday day of the kid. I love it. And I absolutely love it. We were wondering, we are like, why is Spider-Man with Bluey with Mario, like all, all of these different like kid icons, and here we go. And so they have this whole parade, <laughs> and all the kids are lined up and they're asking for candy, and it's essentially like a Halloween, but it's not Halloween, it's Day of the Kid. And this is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We're like 20 or 30 minutes into this too. This has been going on for a while. My phone legitimately filled up because I kept filming and filming it. It's like a phone's full. So fun. I love oh, it. Oh, 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 you gotta move. Los Santo. I didn't hear. Sorry, some guy wanted to get across the road. So it was just all on chaos and we saw Batman with glowing eyes and Mario and Spider-Man and Captain America and Harry Probably Potter. <laughs> It is so much happening, and I love it. It's so much. So, Day of the Kid, look it up.
closer now than what you thought. No more splitting, no more evil. Oh, it's me I speak directly for. This is me I speak directly for. This me I speak directly for. One thing we've learned about Guanajuato is that things don't open very early, especially on a Sunday morning, which is what it is right now. <laughs> it's 7 a.m. We've been up. It's 7.30. It's, we've been up since 6, and like we're fading really fast. We've been up early. We got up at 5 something. Yeah. We've been up a long time. But we're fading really fast because the coffee shops don't open up until at least 8. But we did find a bakery. Yeah, that's the only thing we could find that was open. We were hungry. I still need coffee. Haven't found coffee yet. <laughs> But we got three different things because some of them were not familiar to us. Naturally, we had to get a donut. We got, no. And then we got this little one. I'm not sure if it's sweet or savory. I'm guessing it's- Show it to the camera. Show it to the oh, this? I don't know if it's sweet or savory. We'll find out soon and enough. This one, no idea what it is. I saw it across the room and I thought it was a giant pita. It is not. It's coated in sugar, but this is the biggest pastry show I've ever it, seen in my it. life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a giant sugar cookie pita. See how it's kind of flaky on the bottom? Breakfast of champions. I don't know what it is, but I'm very excited. That was cute. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's actually pretty good. Anything's good when it's coated in sugar. We just bought a giant sugar cookie for breakfast. <laughs> None that's any different than eating a donut for breakfast, I suppose. <laughs> <sighs> the city's starting to wake up, which means shops are starting to open up and the bells are going off. 7.30. Why am I feeding you? I love doing what we do, but sometimes to get the best shots, actually most times to get the best shots, you got to get up for sunrise. Mm -hmm. And we're tired. And that means the nearest coffee shop is a Starbucks, which doesn't open until 8 a.m. You know it's a sleepy town and the Starbucks doesn't open until 8 a.m. <laughs> but man, it's coming alive. We are sitting here waiting for coffee. We've been up and moving about. We've walked miles already. Yeah. Not even eight. So this this town, it it's one of those places where, you know, you, we travel quite a bit. And it's easy for us to get used to traveling, to go to a new place and be like, okay, this is the center. This is the you know, where a nice restaurant is, is but like you, you get into that routine of being like every place sort of has the same thing going on. Mm. But, but this, I mean, relatively, it's not the, I know what you mean. it's not the correct thing to, to think, but it, it just happens, especially when you travel a lot. But this is a town that completely caught us off guard in that it made us feel like we were traveling for the first time again. And just be just because of the architecture and how it's laid out and how beautiful it is, you're like, I cannot believe that this is in the middle of Mexico. Yeah, it caught us by surprise. Everybody told us we were gonna like it. Actually, not a ton of people. A couple of local Mexicans told us, you need to go to Guanajuato. And so we did. And we researched it a little bit before we came and it looked beautiful, but then we got here and just, like our mouths dropped and we're like, this is gorgeous. Why are people not talking about this place? This place is incredible. It's a very old historic city. It's so quaint. It's just been fun to be surprised. I think sometimes we go in and we don't, we don't like to do so much research that we know what to expect of a place. So we want to be surprised. But Chris is right. Sometimes things, is it a donkey? I don't know what that was. Sometimes things do have similar patterns. Like you said, the center. The hip area, you know, like all the, you get the same little like rhythms, but this just caught us off guard. Yeah. I'm sleepy. I need coffee. I think the door's just open. I'm gonna go get coffee now. All right. We have reached the top of the hill in front of the monument that overlooks the city. Usually people come up here via the 
tram or I'm going to try to say this word. I never get it right. Funicular? Is that how you say it? It sounds like a bad word when I say it. The little cable car. It's about 30 pesos each way to come up here. Not a bad price. That's like $1.50, but it doesn't open for a couple more hours on a Sunday. It doesn't open until 10 a.m. It's 8.30 now. We wanted to come on up here because it's going to be hotter later and we've got to get back to Kramer. But we wanted to see this view before we left town because all throughout when we were exploring the city, you could always kind of see the monument as the, it's almost like Christ the Redeemer in Brazil. It's like the point of reference, no matter where you are in the city, you could tell where you are based on the monument, where you're at today. So we wanted to come up here, get this view. I think it'd be absolutely beautiful at sunrise or sunset because the sun rises sort of behind the city and then it'll set behind the monument. Um, so either way, it'd probably be a beautiful view, but we're just up here and we're pointing out the different places that we've been in the city. I don't say this about every city. I fall in love with a lot of cities, but I don't necessarily say I love a city very often. But this, I really have been so surprised by the city. And I think I might love it. Pay the, I'm gonna find some more shade in a second. Do it. Yeah, pay the, pay the 30 pesos. Pay the 30 pesos. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.